Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com here, and I've got a Portuguese trio today. Two whites, one of them sweet, and a rosé. And the first couple, the white and the rosé, the dry white and the rosé, uh, they're both labelled Onda Nova, and the producer says Adega do Cantor. And if your Portuguese is any good, you'll know that Adega, estate, Cantor, singer, the singer's estate. Uh, now the singer in question here, it might not mean anyone to any if you're not in the UK, but there's a, uh, an English singer called Cliff Richard who at one point was England's answer to uh, Elvis. He has, um, I think he's claimed to fame at one point that he'd been in the top ten in every one of the last five or six decades. Uh, and in the, in the last, uh, I can't remember when he started, he had, he's had a place in the Algarve in southern Portugal for quite a long time. Um, and uh, a few years ago he decided, well, I, I enjoy drinking wine, and uh, why, not, why don't I have a go at making it? Now if you've followed Portuguese wine fortunes over the last few years, it's a country that's on the up. It's got some fabulous grape varieties, it's got some increasingly adventurous winemakers, and the flavours you get there, you don't really find them anywhere else in the world. Some terrific wines and terrific value as well. Um, but um, the Algarve, it's where a lot of uh, people go on holiday. Lots of good, really good golf courses there, some nice beaches. Um, but not all that many great wines have come from there. It's just a bit too hot. So, it, but in the, again, last few years, blah, 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 blah. One of the pioneers, I think, in uh, getting, the, um, getting the Algarve into people's wine repertoire was this, was this uh, Adega de Canto, Cliff's Estate. And uh, he's, he, he, got, he brought in some help from a winemaker called David Baverstock. Uh, and uh, between the two of them, they worked out that they wanted to do a little bit of um, the local talent. So they've got, uh, I think, one of their main grapes is Aragones, otherwise known as Tempranillo. And uh, Cliff also likes Syrah, so he planted some Syrah. So I've got a Syrah rosé, um, but the white, I'll do the white first, it's made from Vadello. Uh, 2008 Vadello. Give it a whirl. And there's, sometimes there's debate about whether Verdello in, in this bit of Portugal is the same as a Verdello in Madeira, is the same as Verdello in Australia, is it the same as Verdeco in Spain? I'll leave that to the ampelographers. Let's just give this a worse swirl and a sniff and see, where, see whether, it's, um, whether it's good, first of all. Well, it smells clean and fresh, and um, it's quite far south, the Algarve, um, but what, what, I, what I really do notice here, it's that grip and freshness. There's this ripe, peachy um, pear, fresh pear type of character coming through. Also a little bit of a briny character. It feels like it's going to be, uh, yeah, crisp. Let's have a go. Perfectly respectable wine. It's got this nice texture. Um, you know sometimes you get those slightly gritty bits um, along pear skin. I get a bit of that type of flavour stroke character coming through. Um, it's not overwhelmingly rich and ripe. What it does is it leaves your mouth very refreshed. I'm surprised it comes in at 14% alcohol. But yeah, it's got this, um, it says on the back here, of tropical fruit. I don't get too much of that tropical fruit. I do get, um, it says citrus and tropical fruit. I get, yeah, I get a bit of that citrus, a bit of that lemon peel. Um, but I also get these, um, these, yeah, this pear skin character. Really nice wine, actually. Yeah. And um, yes, good advert for the Algarve um, white wine. It tends to be, it's, it's warm, so it tends to be a place where uh, a, a lot of the, the better wines are, are red, but um, pretty good white. Next one, uh, Rosé, made, I think this is 100% Syrah. Uh, I, I'll do, I'm going to be doing another video sometime very very soon where I've got a, I think I've got 100% Syrah red from them, but this is, this is the Rosé version. Um, it smells of tinned strawberry juice. It's one of those wines that um, it looks, sometimes you look, you look at rosé wine and you think this is almost like um, dental water in terms of colour, but this has got a nice healthy rosé type of colour and it's got this bouncy red fruit flavour, uh, well, red fruit aroma certainly. Let's give it a, a taste and see whether it's the same. Very friendly wine that. Um, it's it's got a bit of bite to it. Uh, it feels like there's very this, this nice ripe strawberry fruit just going on that mushy, slightly tinned strawberry edge. 
uh, but the finish is quite fresh and lively. I mean, I, I, I'm not a big fan of, uh, I, in the last few years, rosé has been so popular, and a lot of the rosé that's, uh, that's appeared as a result of this popularity is frankly poor wine. But this is the sort of wine, it's a chilly February day here, um, but um, it's, it, it's got a nice summery bounce to it. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I end up uh, having a glass of that tonight with some sausages. Not great, but honest. Honest, lots of flavour. Um, you know you're drinking wine. Sometimes you don't know with rosé wine. Sometimes it's just like this pale, shy fawn and there's absolutely no personality to it at all. That's got a bit of bounce, not complex, but honest and tasty. Right, I'd love to be able to tell you more about this final wine. Um, I've, got, I've just put out a call to the importer saying, look, these guys have sent me a wine here. It says late harvest. It says cryptobotrytis on, which sounds like it's something straight out of Avatar. Um, I'm trying to find out what it's made from. Uh, Lago Alva, Quinta de Lago Alva de Sima, uh, in what used to be called the Ribatejo region. Um, but now it's got this big thing on the back, Tejo. It actually said Ribatejo, D-O-C, but they're calling the region. Everyone, they, they want to say Tejo. Tejo is the name of the river. Um, they used to do a late harvest wine here that was made from Riesling and Gewurztraminer. I've reviewed it on my website before, but um, this is a new uh, new style of wine. I'm intrigued at what this is going to be like and what, whether it should be cryo, uh, as in cryo extraction, you know, when you freeze a bit of the grape juice and, uh, and then take some of the ice out, leaving the gooey alcoholic bit left. I don't know, but cryptobotrytis, the Krypton factor. Well, it's got that classic whiff of a bit of a volatility, a bit of that nail varnish edge. But beyond that, it's got this really rich, intense peach, pear, apricot edge. Um, and when you taste it, it's almost like they've got, they've got a, a quite a lot of, of um, the sweet wine character. Almost they've concentrated it and then blended something in to give it a little bit of um, freshness on the finish because I find a slightly smoky grapefruit edge coming through at the, uh, on the finish. It doesn't quite feel quite knitted together as, as it could do, but then um, I, I, I didn't feel like it's been in a barrel for any length of time. Uh, I'll probably find out now that it's been in a barrel for, for a year or something, but I don't get any, any oaky character there. That smokiness is almost like from a elderflower, underripe style, style of uh, character that you, get, you sometimes get in English wines. Yeah, marmalade, apricots, um, and then this, this slightly disjointed character. I would, be, I would love to see whether that, I'd love to see a bottle of this in a year or so to see whether those two almost um, opposing edges have knitted together a, a little bit more. Because at the moment it's good but it, f it just feels like it's got to do a little bit of meshing together in order to, uh, to, get to, to get to what it should be. Well, it's a couple of days later, and I thought I'd do this little bit of the video for, for two reasons, really. Um, first of all, I found out what the, what the actual great makeup is. It is um, like that, those, that first wine I tried from the, the mid-90s. It's half Riesling, half Gewurztraminer, and uh, I don't think it's got any oak on it. And the other reason is I was, I was, I was interested in see, to see what would happen with, with a bit of time after it had been open. Well, let's have, have, give it a whirl and see what it's like. Still got a bit of that volatility that uh, if you, I, 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 the, the way it comes across here, I stick my nose in and I smell things like a little edge of nail varnish, but it's got this real wealth of um, citrus fruit, uh, just sort of jumping up and going, me, 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 pick me, pick me. Have to be honest, I don't get too much of the Gewurztraminer character. It's more on that uh, citrusy uh, Riesling edge. I'd have sworn that there was a bit of something a bit fatter and uh, less aromatic in there, maybe something like Semillon, but um, apparently not. It's very fruity, it's very immediate. It's really tasty. If I have a problem with it, it's just a little bit simple. Um, but very nice peach, pineapple chunk. Mm, very, very ripe apples, ripe red apples there. And um, uh, that for me is, uh, I mean, give me a creme brulee with that and I'd, I'd, I'd really have a nice afternoon.